If you think about it from the perspective of evolution and survival of the fittest, neither sleeping nor dreaming make much sense. In the brutal struggle for survival on this planet, every organism has to compete for resources, in finding potential mates, and to defend themselves from the things that might kill them. Spending a good eight or nine hours out of every day completely inactive and defenseless just so you can hallucinate nonsense images seems like it would hurt your chances for surviving the night, not help them. And yet, just about every living creature on the planet, from bacteria and insects to plants and animals, go through cyclical periods of non-activity. We only have crude tools to understand the experiences of other creatures, but from what we can tell, many of them appear to dream, too. To quote the late great sleep researcher Alan Rechtschaffen, if sleep does not serve an absolute vital function, then it is the biggest mistake the evolutionary process ever made. So what gives? Why do we sleep? And why do we dream? The first answer is pretty straightforward. Over the course of the day, being awake and focused on survival causes stress and tension on the body that results in lots of damage at microscopic levels. Being awake might be necessary if you need to go hunt and gather, but that focused activity comes at a cost. The body needs time to rest and repair even from a typical healthy day, by switching off and turning down important systems in the body so that it can put energies into other areas that need tending. But this doesn't quite explain dreaming. Why spend so much time doing that? The short answer to this is that dreams enable an alternative way to process cognitive information away from focused thinking in order to enable abstraction. During the day, you're able to focus on the things in front of you. Your attention gets directed at a single goal at a time, and that focus lets you, well, do things. But it also has a tendency to give you tunnel vision as to what sorts of actions are possible for any given task. And if you're wondering, yeah, multitasking, it's not a thing. The brain does not do that. So if you play a word association game with someone who is awake, where you give them a word and then ask them to give you the first word that comes to their mind, it usually goes something like this. Fork, answer, knife. Pencil, paper. Zoo, animals. Soldier, gun. And on and on and on. The connections between those words are obvious and related. These results are not much of a shock, but the sleeping brain is completely different when it plays the same game. When sleep researchers ask people that they've just woken up from the depths of REM sleep for their own immediate associations, the pattern it's completely different. It looks more like this. Fork, hippopotamus. Pencil, garden. Zoo, Switzerland. Soldier, poncho. The word pairs are almost never related in any obvious way. In fact, people who just are woken up from dreams have a hard time making direct connection word pairs at all. They are almost physiologically incapable of thinking linearly. So what does this mean in terms of why we dream? According to the sleep literature that I've read and conversations I've had with neuroscientists at MIT and CU Boulder, this sort of abstraction is absolutely vital to survive in a hostile world. Think about it this way. During the day, your brain tries to understand the things around it in a logical way, to pick apart cause from effect in order to get things done. But the problem with too much focus is that it has a tendency to stick to what is familiar with what it knows works. Now, if you're a hunter-gatherer whose only technique is to stalk an antelope by checking the popular watering hole, you might never realize that it could be even more advantageous to instead try to locate wherever that animal beds down or to devise a trap for the animal. Now, I'm not a hunter, so take that with a bit of a grain of salt. This is not hunting advice. But my point is it takes an element of abstract thinking to try out new ideas. This creative process 
process starts in dreams. Now, of course, there's a caveat here that is going to beg the question of what a dream is in the first place, but that's a little too technical for what I want to mention in this video. I have another video in this playlist that gets into that question much more specifically. Instead, I want to explain the same idea in terms of neurology. One of the things that dreams do is allow you to work out problems that stymie you during the day. If you think about a thought as a neural pathway between two locations in the brain, then the waking brain aims to take the most efficient path from the origin of the thought to its solution as possible. It wants to move in straight lines from point A to point B. But the sleeping brain, on the other hand, will take the same task but meander through several regions of the brain, bumping between all sorts of other places before it lands at its destination. Every node in that thought's journey is a different thought or emotion or idea that has been stored in your gray matter over the course of being alive. While some of those points may be useless, occasionally. Sometimes that random movement of thoughts and neurons can come up with fascinating and useful combinations of information that actually become useful in your waking life. This is the way that dreams allow you to access all of your past memories and experiences and use them to focus on problems that you've been chewing on before you went to bed. It's why you wake up sometimes with inspiration. Incidentally, Dreams don't only give us creative solutions to problems, that's only one of their functions, but they also help form the basis of our emotional life and let us clear out useless information that doesn't serve us anymore from our memory. In fact, dreams play a critical role in letting us forget things that get in the way of novel solutions. See my video, Why Do We Forget Our Dreams, for more information on that. So this is a very short summary of why dreams make us more creative and how they evolve to make us better at surviving this chaotic and hostile world. But there's a lot more to sleeping and dreaming than just that. This video is a part of a series of videos I'm doing on the power of dreams in relation to my new book, Dream, the Art and Science of Slumber. It's right there. See it? It's really cool looking. Anyway, go through the playlist and dive deeper into that world of our subconscious. Thanks so much for being here. I can't wait to tell you everything else that I found out.